I didn't even touch it. I wasn't even out here. Was I lucky? All I know is I'm working on stuff in the shop. I'm standing over the, uh, the bandsaw and I hear Pshh. Come out here and look at this. Oh no. I wasn't even out here. Lucky was very bothered by this. It bothered the dog. Oh, I'm just very thankful that happened here, not on the road. Oh man. You know, this disc is an absolute mess right now. I told you guys I was gonna order a uh, hydraulic cylinder to run from the front of this to the tongue to adjust it, which I did. I set it out here and the goats came and chewed up the box, so I gotta clean that up. <sighs> and then a tire self-destructs, lovely. So this disc has some miles on it. I bought the thing used earlier on this year and uh, we are going to be fixing pretty much all the problems that it has, so it's gonna be ready to use the next time that I need it. Uh, what I like about it is it's a very solid machine. There's nothing bent, there's nothing broken. I feel pretty confident in saying that because I've run it for whatever it was, a week or so, earlier on this spring. And it works really well, but it's not perfect. Obviously there's the tires. The other thing is this hydraulic cylinder leaks and it also leaks down as you're driving. So I suspect this has some internal damage, you know, some blown seals, something along those lines. And the other thing is this adjustment for the tongue pretty much just doesn't work. There's an Acme threaded rod that goes down through these springs and it's missing whole pieces of the thread. So yeah, we're gonna replace that with the hydraulic cylinder which is over in this part of my death trap of a shop. I picked this up and we're going to fabric cobble mounts for that and install fire. it. All right, uh, let's see. I think I can get the cylinder removed, taken apart and ready to go before lunchtime. And while I'm picking up new seals for that in town, I'll also have these tires changed. So we got to dismount those. And I guess while we're in here, repack the uh, wheel bearings as well. Cause who knows when the last time that was done. All right, so I will say this does not seem to be a waste of energy because this thing appeared to be leaking on this uh, rod here because like I'd, I'd stop tillage work, I'd go out and check the disc and there'd be oil and dirt combination all over this. And uh, it did not seem to be leaking from either ends of this pipe thing. And that did not surprise me when I opened this up and discovered that the O-rings, they pretty much all look like they're fine. There's these little flat deals in here that are felt or something, I don't really know. Uh, the, some of those are in better shape than others, but all the O-rings were intact. The main problem is this. Uh, I opened this up and you can see there's three grooves in there for three different seals. I don't know how well that comes through on camera. But one of them, the one closest to the camera, just flat out didn't exist. I don't think there's anything in there. Uh, maybe like some remnants of a seal and a lot of like packed in dirt and everything. The second one came out intact and that's there. So we'll have a good one to show the hydraulic shop. And then the third one came out in pieces. So yeah, this definitely needed to be done. And uh, I'm very happy with it. Now, one thing I've kind of figured out about doing hydraulic cylinders like this, I've not done very many. But in my opinion, it's really best if you don't replace a seal in the thing because some people like they'll say, oh, well, it's just this. All you need are a couple of $2 seals. Yeah, but we're replacing everything because that way I know what I have. I know that it didn't leak as of, you know, when we're done with this, Lord willing. And uh, I don't have to worry about every time I use it. Well, you know, there's still like five seals in this that are probably 30 years old. I wonder if they're going to be any good. Cheap insurance. We already have to take it off the machine. We already have to take it apart and go to the hydraulic shop. Might as well change them all out while we're at it. Uh, let's, uh, let's grab these wheels and tires as well.
Okay, I don't know how well this is gonna come through on camera, but these bearings are uh, pretty much completely destroyed. I'm gonna make a new rule that says anytime I open a dust cap and there is topsoil inside, we're replacing everything. This bearing, the smaller of the two, I mean, I guess they both still spin, but it is rough, it is gritty. I think you can even hear that. And uh, it is in very, very poor condition. Its neighbor, however, this is even worse. You can see there's flaking all over the, uh, the bearing race here. Still turned smooth enough now that I got all that nasty filth out of here. I think that was a lot of grease with a dust seal that has, um, with a dust seal that's past its prime. <sighs> Mixed with feet and feet and feet, like 40 to 80 inches of rainfall per year for probably 30 to 50 years, however long it's been since someone's been in here. And uh, well, this is what you get. So we're gonna go off to the, uh, we're gonna head off to town. I'm gonna try to find replacements for these and pick up some high hydraulic seals and get these tires changed and it's gonna be time to put this all back together. Wish me luck. Right now I'm just saying my prayers that this did not, uh, and being thankful that this did not fail catastrophically and totally come apart as I was going down the road with that thing. Uh, this is why I say it's re you really should be buying farm equipment like this a season in advance so you have time to go through and deal with stuff like this and uh, you know you don't have to be running sketchy equipment or have breakdowns mid-season. All right, so we're back from the hydraulic shop. That was actually yesterday. I had some other stuff to take care of. Uh, but as you can see, I've got all sorts of treasures for this. I got all the seals needed to put this back together. We got some new bearings for the uh, wheels on this. The hydraulic shop said that uh, whatever this big orange band is called, it's vastly superior to the O-ring with the two flat things on it. And uh, so that's what they recommended and what they gave me. So I guess we got to figure out how to stuff all this back together now. Now the guy at the uh, hydraulic shop, He's really cool. He told me to hone the inside of this. I see there's like one spot of rust in here. Other than that, it looks fine to me. Uh, excluding that spot of rust, I don't think it really needs it, but they did tell me to do that. And uh, I kind of want to take their, take their advice. Okay. Yeah. That's a big Okay, now we gotta wipe it out real well so there's none of that grit in there. There's still one spot in here. I think that's where the rust was. It's smooth now though, it's just discolored relative to the rest of the steel. So for those wondering, the uh, hydraulic shop, this cost me like 40 bucks I think for all the seals that I bought. The main one was that big fat orange one. That thing was like half of that it was like 20 bucks you know this is one of my better ideas if I do say so myself just having a different oil can for all kinds of different liquids and actually putting on them uh, what is on them I like it so much I used all the oil out of this I gotta refill it uh, let's see yeah we want it like this so as not to go all the way down to the other end that has that rust spot Okay, where's my brass hammer? Both ends appear to be tapered pretty evenly. It's moving easier. Okay, uh, what's next? All right, so there's two seals, an O-ring and a flat dealio. I've been told that the flat dealio is called a backup seal by the friendly man at the high hydraulic shop. And so that goes in here first. Thus it is on the outside of the O-ring, which goes on just like that. 